Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're listening. This is Davis Phil on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. We live at kdrt.org online. I'm Bill Buchanan, I'm the host, and I thank you for tuning in again for our latest Zoom interview session. Uh, with the pandemic, we don't have access to the studio right now, so we're recording these programs on Zoom. So if it sounds a little different, that's why. Well, the pandemic uh, has closed or curtailed most stores, with a notable exception, a type of store that almost couldn't close. I'm talking, of course, about grocers. So what's it been like running and working in a food store during the COVID-19 pandemic? Has the experience changed as shoppers adjusted to the new conditions? And are there any insights here for other Davis retailers, or really for any of us, as other stores plan their own reopenings? My guests today to talk about this are two employees of the Davis Food Co-op, the longtime Davis grocer on F Street. Madison Soya, the co-op's education and outreach specialist, and Laura Sanchez, the operations manager. They're here joining me by Zoom today, and they've got their masks on, so if they sound a little muffled, that's why. It's part of the adjustment we're all doing these days. Madison and Laura, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you for having us. So we should just maybe say that, uh, maybe if you'd each just say your name so maybe people can help keep you straight. Sure, I am uh, Laura. Hi, I'm Madison. Okay, so, uh, well, let's just start with the, the question. I mean, you're, you're running a grocery store during the pandemic. I'm just curious, what's that like on your side? I've, I should say I'm a member of the co-op myself, my wife and I have for years, so I've been in there and I've seen the shopping and seen everybody working. What's it like from your side of the, the counter, so to speak? Yeah, I think that um, if we go back to the beginning, originally, you know, seeing even before the shelter in place, just seeing a huge influx of people preparing, which was great for business. We saw increase in sales in um, specific departments like packaged grocery, our wellness, and was really great for the first part of March when we're talking about sales wise and we were able to meet the needs when a lot of grocers were having, uh, corporate grocers were having issues keeping things in stock. Um, our commitment to local vendors and um, sourcing from local farmers kept our supply sustainable and we were really appreciative about that. Um, and then you know, people kind of scaled back, shelter in place hit, and we definitely saw that as well. And I think that's when staff started to feel differently about being at work, quite honestly. And that was one of the things I was really proud of being uh, the operations manager here at the co-op, being able to adjust with what the staff needed. You know, there were different feelings about coming to work and we had open door uh, communication about, you know, what people felt. We did put safety at the forefront and told people don't come to work if you don't feel ill or if you feel ill, no matter how small it is. We wanted to be safe and protect everyone right off the bat, stocked up on, you know, sanitizer and gloves for the staff and put up barriers at our registers before any of that was implemented or mandated by the county and just try to be on the precautionary end of, of that piece. And I think now we're finding a new normal. You know, we are seeing a decrease in our customer traffic, but the basket sizes are bigger and we're still able to, to, to deal with that. Um, and keeping our restricted shopping hours for those that we recognize are, uh, you know, at risk in our community and being able to put health and safety at the forefront, having people at the door, sanitizing the carts, you know, frequently cleaning our bathrooms with a deep clean and viricide and just making sure that we're ultra aware of all of those things that we can do and that are in our power to continue to do throughout the pandemic. That's a pretty thorough answer. There were actually several questions I might've asked uh, that, but you've already <laughs> answered them. And one was yeah. gonna be, you know, what steps have you taken? And I, I think you just listed them all. You had one phrase in there that I'm not familiar with. You said larger baskets. Does that mean like uh, the amount of, right. of purchase? Yes, yeah, so in our, if you're looking at our customer shopping trip, the purchase size has gotten significantly bigger to what it was prior to the pandemic. I think it's almost a 86% increase than it used to be, and which is good. I mean, that's kind of what the county and the public health department is saying, less trips, bigger baskets. And so we see people at the co-op are following that. Okay. 
Well, let's see, we're talking in the first week of May. And so shelter in place has been in Yolo County for not quite two months yet or so. And you talked about sort of people getting to a new normal. I know the first couple of weeks, you know, like I would go in there, if you wanted hand sanitizer, you had to get it, you know, one at a time there at the service desk. I noticed that's back out on the shelves now. I guess I'm wondering, have a, are shoppers relaxing a little? Or are people sort of getting used to this change? Yes, I think so. Um, I think that one, our distribution centers are able now to level out and the panic buying has subsided a little. So people aren't, you know, stockpiling and that makes more availability and also recognizing the quantity limits and just staying in touch with our different suppliers for those very sensitive items and making sure that we're trying to get those in. And as we do, and they become regularly available, we kind of lift the quantity limits on those so that people can buy one or two. But I think that's what's nice about being here in the co-op. We can switch if we see that a change is needed immediately to be able to provide for the community as a whole. So Madison, your education and, and outreach, what's that job like during a pandemic? What kind of outreach and education do you do you do these days? It is a lot different during a pandemic. So usually we would have events on the patio or classes in our teaching kitchen, and we're still trying to keep our sense of community with the co-op, and we're transitioning that to be online. So we've been updating our um, website blog more frequently with recipes and some videos that are like cooking classes so that way it kind of feels like you could still come to the teaching kitchen and learn how to make something we've been having um some giveaways on our social media or a few competitions on our social media to try and keep our community still involved in the co-op okay so there are still things you can do i guess that's part of the big change everybody's making, right, is, is going from more physical presence, whatever the job is, to more online. Obviously, of course, a grocery store is a physical presence. You have to go physically and obtain the food. Laura, you'd mentioned earlier about sales being up, and I, I noticed, I think I got this from the National Retail Federation, National Retail Federation, reported in April that grocery sales had risen 26% from the year before. Now, a big piece of that, I gather, is online sales. But I mean, so, but the sales are up at the co-op that it sounds like, right? You, do you have yeah. any, how are you guys doing financially with, with this? Are you doing okay? Yeah. Yes, I can share, um, you know, the beginning of the year prior to pandemic, we were already in a pretty good financial spot, seeing pretty good sales growth for the first quarter. Those uh, in the second quarter of our year, we were doing pretty well as well in the beginning prior to the pandemic. And then the big spike in sales um, definitely gave us an extra boost to where our second quarter ended up being almost 11% up. And being able to you know, have a good financial beginning to the year allowed us to ride the ebbs and flows that did occur. And we, we are in a good spot now. And you know, that's truly because the beginning of the year we were, we were pretty decent and going into the pandemic, we did well. And like I said, sourcing our food from local retailers where a lot of corporates were getting from the same spot and couldn't fulfill their shelves that kept us alive really and so we thank our local farmers and our our local suppliers because that that kept us in stock yeah i, I wanted to ask how your supply lines are doing i, I know the co-op does source differently than the larger the conventional grocers do and i know from what i read you know suppliers sometimes have they, they can't get the food into the channel or they sold to restaurants and the restaurants aren't don't nearly have the demand they did or in some cases they've you know closed all together are your suppliers uh, are they doing okay yeah for the most part there's uh, some smaller manufacturers that just shifted to increasing production on high demand items versus some of the lower demand items so we do see that but we have really good communication with a lot of our distributors and they have communication with manufacturers. So anytime we're hearing that that's um, coming over the horizon for different products, we're able to move quickly and look for other sources if it is a vital item. So if a, if a supplier is changing, in other words, you're saying you can adapt to that because you have, you see it coming, you hear it coming. Oh yeah, we, we, our suppliers give us weekly updates, especially with COVID-19 and the supply chain seeing 
some changes like that. We were in the loop almost weekly about what was going on from the main distributors and also um, what they were seeing from manufacturers and changes in, in different productions. So, you know, one of the questions, every shopper has this question, you know, why are certain things scarce and continue to be scarce? And I, you guys work in the business. I want to ask you, toilet paper and flour seem like two major ones. It was sanitizer earlier, but now that seems more available. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Why? Because it's not a supply problem, right? Or, or is it? Uh, I mean, is it a problem with flour and toilet paper? Or is it just that people are still wanting to acquire that whenever they see it and that just sort of empties the shelves? Yeah, I think um, at least I could say for some things, people are still wanting to acquire large amounts. Um, and talking to some of our customers, they're also shopping for a neighbor, a family member, someone that can't leave. So they are taking more quantities than, you know, just for an individual person, uh, which makes a difference. If they're coming in to shop for two or three people, they're picking that up all at once versus we see that throughout the week. And so in some items, yes, we have seen that. And I would say some of the things we are getting back normalcy in, in staple items and um, something where we see that a lot is our bulk department. So yeast, flour, things like that, um, we are seeing back, you know, to normal levels. Okay. So at some point then looking for flour in a grocery store won't be like an Easter egg hunt, a difficult yeah. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, just, it's been that way sometimes, I, I, I got to say. Yeah. Um, well, I think... Bill, sorry. I think that oh, also people, people's habits at home are changing, right? They're not going out to eat as frequently. A lot of people started baking at home, which they weren't regularly. And so that was a demand that a lot of manufacturers didn't see. And, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to production at the very beginning. And so if that's something we could not have foreseen, um, then how could they, you know, manufacture that quickly? So I think it was kind of a catch up game for some people some uh, manufacturers. We'll do a quick station ID here. Uh, the program is Davisville, and I'm Bill Buchanan, the host on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. And my guests today are two employees of the Davis Food Co-op, Madison Soya, who is the co-op's education and outreach specialist, and Laura Sanchez, the operations manager. So uh, what do you hear from your customers during the pandemic? Uh, you guys have a suggestion box. Uh, you know, I'm, I've always thought grocery stores get the entire range of people in town, right? I mean, everybody needs food. Not necessarily they all shop with co-op, but you're going to see a wide range of people. What are you hearing from people? What are you, what are you taking from what you hear? And that's a very broad question, but I'd be in, in whatever answer you have. So we've been hearing a wide range of responses. Um, from our community about everything that we've been doing, everything that the Yolo County, all the guidelines Yolo County has been putting in place. We now have somebody stationed at the door to make sure that people are wearing masks when they come in. Um, and that's where we get a lot of our feedback. And that's where we get a lot of our positive feedback. So there's people who are coming into the store and when we tell them that everything's already been sanitized, they're very grateful. People in the community are very happy that we're staying open. Um, and then there's also people um, who are referring to us as first responders. We're not medical first responders, but we're still co-op staff members who are still coming to work, putting their self at risk um, in order to keep our community fed and healthy. Okay. I mean, are, are you, not that, you, not that you're all bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where people come in and, and tell you uh, what they are, but you must get a sense of uh, the mood of, of your shoppers overall, broadly. How has the mood been and how has it changed, if it has changed, since uh, this all started in March? Um, well, I think talking to people who are coming into the store, um, originally coming into the co-op, um, everyone would be like, pretty upbeat. Um, it's a community grocery store. Um, there's a big sense of community whenever people come into the store. But now standing out at the front when I welcome people into the store, when the person out front welcomes people into the store, they say hi and some people are really happy and upbeat, but 
I know that with all the changes that are going on in Yolo County, some people, lots of people, everybody is still adjusting to all of the changes. They feel kind of confused when they come into the store because they have to wear masks. The feeling in the store feels a little bit different because things look a little different. There's new rules, um, but we're still trying to keep that, that sense of community in the store. Okay. Hard to predict the future, but it looks like the pandemic is easing to a point where other stores might be able to reopen at least somewhat. Uh, you folks at the co-op have done something now that not many people have. You have run a business through the pandemic uh, and you've, you've stayed open. You've had people inside and all that. I mean, I'm wondering what kind of insights uh, maybe uh, or advice you might have for other retailers uh, or, or maybe for shoppers uh, as well uh, as we kind of get back into stores um, as, as the stores reopen. What, what advice do you have? Um, I think, you know, running store operations, um, putting safety and health of your, your employees and, your, and your, your customers first. You know, I, we do daily um, store huddles in uh, open space before we open. And then later on in the afternoon, just to check in on the team and give them the latest update. They want to know what's happening. What did we change? Acknowledging that they are working through a difficult time and that you, they are appreciated. And, you know, doing that every day, day in and day out, so that you acknowledge that coming to work is not easy sometimes. You know, some of our staff has family members that are vulnerable um, at home and, you know, they get concerned about that risk. And I think just simply acknowledging and also checking in individually and seeing what people need. I think businesses who open need to prioritize that first. Um, and then secondly, I would say be prepared to be flexible and adaptable. Things can change from one day to another and you need to figure out how to adjust and um, being able to do that and be flexible will, will keep you going and keep you safe and keep your store um, operating as smoothly as possible in the in these times and I would say for staff be ultra cautious with yourself don't come to work if you feel a small tickle in your throat we are still being extra cautious and and allowing people to take the time that they need um, to to feel well and letting them know it's for their own protection and the well-being of you know our our own little community which are our staff so okay so if I was sort of summarizing that, it, it sounds like you're saying, you know, pay attention to yourself, acknowledge that it's a changing situation, and give it time. Give it time to, to figure out what it is you're going to do, how your customers are doing, things like that. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah I think um, one thing I would add to that is hearing customer feedback. Some people have a lot to share, and knowing that um, sometimes you are that place where they're, they're sharing some of their confusion, their frustrations, and it's, it's a difficult time for everyone. So just being understanding and, and a little bit sensitive and a little bit caring and, and knowing that, you know, there may be some other frustrating factor before they come to your store, but just, you know, being a, a, an ear too is sometimes what people need because they're at home all day and this is their one, one time they may interact with someone. So, yes. I my wife and I have talked about that. Grocery shopping is almost a recreation now, you know. Yes. Yeah. One no, time we get out. Um, and that's an interesting comment. And I think that's insightful uh, about, you know, people might come to you um, with something that has nothing to do with the co-op, but you're handy. You're there. Right. Have you had any moments like that that you can talk about? Um, maybe as employees there yourself, uh, either of you. Yeah, I think for, for myself, um, in the very beginning, just phone calls uh, regarding things that were happening or inquiring about product and um, turn, that conversation turning into something about, you know, just being nervous about all the changes and, you know, people started to open up a lot and it was, um, you know, I, I had a customer that broke down on the phone and, and started crying. And I just said, it's hard for all of us right now, you know, and I probably spent 30 minutes on the phone with that customer, but you know, it's difficult. I can't imagine my mother, my aunt, my own sister having no one to, to share those feelings with. So 
-hmm. yeah we've we've had those moments and i think it's it's a different time for all of us so yeah you know madison i would imagine in in the area of education and outreach you might even be more likely to to run into that you know you have a session um um we call on your skills, I guess is what I'm saying, as someone who's used to working with people, or I imagine you are. Yeah, uh, um, I have been uh, the one um, managing our social medias. Um, so I get a lot of questions or a lot of direct messages on there about people who have concerns about what measures we're taking in the store. Um, and whenever I get any messages on social media, I make sure to be very transparent and understanding with the person who's reaching out to me. Um, and then also in the education component um, and with our huddles, it's part of my job to keep the staff educated. So um, about once a week, I'll give a little talk about safety, about how to take care of your mask um, and about how to keep proper hygiene on the floor to make sure that you're staying safe and that our customers are staying safe. Okay, pretty practical advice. Yeah. So we have about five or six minutes left. I wanted to ask a little bit. Um, is it, uh, have, have you had conversations yet about how the pandemic might change shopping? I know generally there's this idea that there's gonna be more online, generally, at least until there's a vaccine and maybe until confidence levels increase, people are gonna be less inclined to wanna to share public spaces. Uh, again, people still need food, but uh, have you guys started to think about that, how that might change shopping, how it might change the co-op? Yeah, we have actually started that discussion a lot in the last couple of weeks. And um, one of the bigger things the co-op has not had is an online presence um, in the past. And so we work really hard to figure out how to get that up and running. Um, so we are actually doing a soft launch on Friday um, on our website for curbside pickup and online shopping. And that's a really new, innovative, exciting thing for our co-op. We have not endeavored into that space yet. And so um, we're excited about that and the team is excited about that and something that we may not have thought about this year and maybe that was five years down the line, but we're ready to, to move forward on that and we are excited to, to do that and um, talking about other type of um, sales or operations we can do so that we minimize contact still because you know, we don't know how long this will go and we do know people will be cautious and we want to still be able to provide for them without the fear of coming into the store. We've also, uh, we have on our patio a, a window that used to be for um, a beer on tap and we've changed that. It's attached to our deli and people can come um, and pre-order meals that are made and refrigerated, uh, cooked off. All they have to do is heat it up and they can actually walk up to the window, pay with their credit card or debit card, and we just you know, hand it off to them across the window. They don't even have to come inside the store. And so adapting and changing um, is something we've talked about a lot and are, are you know, just having to do to, to know that we need to cater to our needs for our customers right now and our ownership. Yeah. So we're, we're excited about that. So we're actually, we're talking on Wednesday, May, what is today? Wednesday, May 6th, I think. So when you say Friday, that's the uh, 8th? Okay, yeah. so that'll be, when people hear this, that'll be in the past, but that sounds like that'll be an ongoing service where you'll d to deliver. Is that in Davis or Yolo County or? or uh, so we're gonna, yes, sorry. Uh, we will start out with curbside pickup. So like a lot of restaurants, you just pull up and we will ask if you want it loaded into your car so we don't make contact and you can pay online prior to your, to showing up and um, and maybe the next level of that is delivery, um, but we're taking it in phases. Okay, so a few minutes left. I want to ask a couple of general questions. Um, what's something that people haven't understood about the grocery business during this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Anything that, you know, when you talk with your friends that like I say, a common misconception people might have. I don't I have no idea what that would be. Yeah, I think uh, something I'm hearing a lot from my own family, uh, a lot of them are state county workers, um, privatized, um, that we're all at to work at home, you know, and 
I'm still going to work every day. Um, and I think that people didn't think of grocery workers as essential in the past. And, and now we're very much more appreciated than, than before. And I, I was kind of shocked at first to hear that from my own family. Um, but just saying, hey, be careful out there. And, you know, you're brave for going to work. And I, I hope that that stays with people knowing that, you know, it's more than just stocking shelves. We're providing food for the communities. And if we weren't here, I don't know who would be doing that. So I hope that's something that, that has changed and will change forever in people's minds. The, the perception of what we do is more important than just stocking shelves. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect the pandemic has um, got people thinking differently about a lot of things that, that you know, we used to take for granted, you know, yeah. just in an ordinary day. And food is a classic one, right? You go to the store, you buy what you want, you're on your way. You hardly think about it. Uh, you might have a fine experience, but you don't really think about it. Um, what have you learned about Davis from this pandemic? I think I have learned that there's a bigger sense of community than people know. Um, a lot of the comments on social media and things we were hearing from our shoppers were protect your staff. And people donated masks when we were still trying to source where to get those from. And um, some people sewed them, some people put post-it notes, you know, contact me if you need more. And you know, that was good to, to be the place where people wanted to give and protect us as part of their community. And, and I think that, um, like Madison said, people being thankful and it just has felt more like we are taking care of each other in Davis um, okay. than we ever have. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to end it there. Uh, I've come to the end of the half hour. Uh, we've been talking with Madison Soya and Laura Sanchez uh, of the Davis Food Co-op. And thank you again. And by the way, you know, it occurs to me, this might be the first interview anyone's ever done, at least at the station, with people in masks. Because, <laughs> we because like you're to both, pioneers. <laughs> yeah, and you're sharing an office there. That's why you're doing it. I mean, I'm not wearing a mask, but I'm at home. And so I really appreciate you both talking through your masks. Uh, that's got to have felt pretty unnatural. Anyway, thank you for, uh, for talking with us today. Uh, I'm Bill Buchanan. This is Davisville on KDRT. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back.